Hello and welcome to Vendor Trash. Is the name a reference to my opinions, my drawing skills, or both? That's for you to decide. Okay, that was bad and I apologize, but this video is all about Illidan Stormrage and why he is indisputably the coolest character of Warcraft. Now, just to be clear, he is not my favorite character in Warcraft. If we're sticking to major characters and not just, you know, little joke characters, he's probably in my top 10. But despite my personal preferences, he's objectively the coolest. He's incredibly campy, he is metal AF, and he embodies everything that makes the franchise great. Now, I absolutely appreciate deeper and more introspective characters, but they really need to be balanced out with some good old edgelord grit. Heck, demon hunters are pretty much edgelord the class, and when they were first announced, I kind of balked at how fanservice-y it all was. But whatever, they're cool, and Illidan is even cooler. So let's get down to it and dissect what exactly makes Illidan so hip, jive, all that, and a bag of chips. Front and center, we have his character design. He's a night elf, and while elves are cool and all, being a night elf itself kind of makes you a hippie. So to balance this out, he's also half demon. Being half demon makes anything cooler. I mean, just look at those hooves. If female Dran and I have taught us anything, it's that hooves are sexy. Then of course there are his wings, but they're not those lame wings that basically are just your arms. They're the awesome kind of wings that sprout out of your back, which is very important because he needs to keep his arms to wield his awesome war glaives. War glaives are objectively some of the coolest weapons you could possibly use. They even form an X when you're carrying them on your back. And X is the coolest letter of the alphabet. Blizz themselves recognized just how awesome war glaives are and invented a new weapon type exclusively to be used by demon hunters. That is not efficient design, but they did it anyways for the cool factor. Now, granted, I think they dropped the ball a little bit. On my demon hunter, I happen to mog into swords just because the audio profile of war glaives is a little too noisy for me. But that just means I'm not cool enough for war glaives. And Illidan himself has the coolest set of war glaives that there are the war glaives of Azanoth. These are one of the sickest weapon models in the game. People still farm the heck out of Illidan just so they can mog into them, as well as the cursed vision of Sargeras, and we're gonna get to the blindfold, don't you doubt that. Now in the Legion expansion, they actually had Illidan wielding a different, much smaller set of war glaives. I'm assuming to preserve the fantasy that we looted his original war glaives off of him in Burning Crusade. And these other war glaives are definitely less cool, but I think it goes to show that Illidan wasn't just using his awesome war glaives that summon fell fire elementals as a crutch. He was awesome on his own. Those things were just the garnish. But yeah, let's circle back to his eyes. Illidan was one of the rare night elves that was born with golden eyes that symbolized that he was destined for greatness. Now, this is certainly kind of cool but not cool enough. So he got a wicked cool upgrade when Sargeras burned out his eyes and gave him Spectral Sight as a replacement. Now this did make him blind to the, you know, light spectrum, but blind characters are inherently more cool. Just look at Toph from Avatar The Last Airbender. She's a 12 year old girl and the coolest character in that show. And now Illidan gets to make a bunch of blind jokes. It's actually a win-win. And of course he gets to wear his awesome blindfold as a result. And of course there's the fact that he runs around shirtless. This would be justified by his physique alone, but he also has some sick tats, yo. Glowing green fell tattoos, no less. This guy's whole design just exudes sex appeal. And you don't have to take my word for it, take Sargeras's. What did he want with Illidan in Legion? His body. When the Dark Titan himself wants to use your body as his vessel, you know you're doing something right. But Illidan is far more than just his body. He's also arguably the character with the most agency in the whole franchise. I've stated in the past that after Medivh and Gul'dan, Illidan is probably the most influential character of the story, but Medivh and Gul'dan could both be considered puppets or servants in some way. Illidan, on the other hand, while he did feign loyalty to the Legion at certain points in time, was always working his own goals, and he never stood around waiting for things to happen. His destiny was his own. And you've got to respect that in a character. A big part of why he always takes so much action is his belief that the end justifies the means. Take, for example, the aftermath of the War of the Ancients. After the Well of Eternity was blown up, the Night Isles pretty much wanted nothing to do with magic anymore. An understandable reaction, but a short-sighted one. Illidan knew that magic would be vital to fend off the Legion should it ever return. 
and so he happened to save seven vials of the well's water. He used several of these vials to create a new well of eternity from which Nordrasil would grow. Then 10,000 years later, after Tyrande freed him from prison, he was tasked with driving out the Legion forces from what is now considered Felwood. Illidan learned that to do this he would have to destroy the skull of Gul'dan that was powering the corruption, and that by tapping into the powers of the skull itself, he himself could power up. This would of course shift him closer to demonhood himself, but he considered that worth it. Then, in the Frozen Throne, he acquired the Eye of Sargeras from the Tomb of Sargeras, and attempted to use this to shatter Ice Crown and the Frozen Throne by basically causing a worldwide earthquake. Admittedly, this was at the behest of Kill Jaden, but it was serving to destroy a more immediate threat in the Lich King. And possibly the biggest example was at the end of the Tomb of Sargeras raid. After slaying Kil Jaden and making their way back to the Broken Isles, it's revealed that Illidan used the Sargeric Keystone to keep the portal open, which meant that Argus was hovering in the sky within shooting distance of Azeroth. Aside from being one of the coolest visual flares the game has ever done, this essentially made it mandatory for the people of Azeroth to deal with the Legion now, if they didn't want to be overrun with demons. Illidan's political philosophy is accelerationism and I am all here for it. And speaking of awesome cutscenes, nobody has more of them than Illidan Stormrage. He's got his fair share of whatever ones, but I'll run through the highlights. He kicked off the Frozen Throne with a pretty decent one where he summoned Lady Vash's Naga to his aid. And of course, then we have the Burning Crusade trailer where he debuted his most notorious catchphrase. Then in the lead up to Legion, we had a cinematic teaser that was literally just Gul'dan finding Illidan's body in the Vault of the Wardens. Blizz knew that Illidan's mere presence was enough to get people hyped, and between Wad's reputation and Illidan literally being sealed inside of a crystal, this was pretty much a in-case-of-emergency-break-glass situation. And when Illidan properly re-entered the story at the end of the Nighthold, it was even more hype. Seriously, go watch it, it's so cool. Illidan's wings popping out behind Gul'dan was such amazing flair, and Gul'dan had to know he was screwed at that moment. Which he was, Illidan disenchanted him with fell energy on the spot. This was both poetic justice for Gul'dan because he killed Varian in the same way, and a certain kind of ironic because Illidan gained a good chunk of his demonic powers by consuming the skull of main universe Gul'dan, and now he's the one killing alternate universe Gul'dan. How often do things tie together that neatly in WoW lore? Then of course there's the aforementioned Tomb of Sargeras finale, and it just keeps going. At the start of the 7.3 quest, as they're preparing the Vindicar to travel to Argus, Illidan has a nice little heart-to-heart -heart with Valen. It's a bit tense, but as I mentioned in my Priest Rachel's video, I love the illidan villain dynamic. Illidan really comes across as a jerk at the start here, but the two of them really come to respect each other. And shortly into Argus questing, we have Rejection of the Gift. And this seriously had to be one of the top 5 Warcraft moments ever. It was so edgy and perfect, and if you don't fully appreciate it, let me paint you a picture for the situation we were in back then. Throughout all of Legion up to that point, we kept getting quests from Zira, basically hinting that Illidan was going to be some prophesized child of light and shadow. That there had been visions of him leading the army of the light as some light-forged individual himself. Everybody in the community hated this. They were going to ruin Illidan by making him something that he's not. And this cutscene shattered those fears. Not only did we get to see just how zealous the light and its followers could be, but we get to see Illidan laser beam Zira to death. Zira being pretty much the highest tier light aligned individual we had seen up to this point. And he was entirely justified in doing this. It was perhaps a bit extreme, but he wasn't given a lot of options. And more than any other scene, it's a testament to Illidan having his own agency, controlling his own destiny. And heck, even when Turalyon charges him for it, Illidan just stops his sword with his bare hand. Afterwards, everyone's pretty chill with Illidan. They understand why he had to do what he did. And then there's the last of Illidan's cutscenes, for now that comes at the end of the Antorus raid. It's him resolving to stay behind at the seat of the Pantheon to serve as Sargeras' jailer. The exact mechanics behind this are pretty ambiguous because obviously Sargeras is way more powerful than Illidan, but presumably if the other titans did need him for anything, they could provide the raw power while he provides the martial prowess. And of course we get the final touching moment between him and Velen. Just bros being bros. Now another great thing that comes out of these cutscenes is Illidan's many Many, many catchphrases. You are not prepared. Sometimes the hand of fate must be forced. I am my scars. My destiny is my own. I have sacrificed everything. 
What have you given? Okay, that last one isn't Illidan specifically, but it is Demon Hunters and close enough. He also just has some great banter. Like in Cathedral of Eternal Night, which I know everybody ran nonstop in Legion. He and Maeve need to team up and he tells her to posture if you must, Maeve. But for now, do what you do best and follow me. Like, dang, son. And then as you're walking up to Agrimar, Velen starts talking about how demons would sooner pluck out their eyes than gaze upon the world soul of Argus. Illidan's just, who could ever imagine such a sacrifice? So Illidan's not only cool, he is freaking hilarious. Now, that's not to say that Illidan doesn't have his flaws. Every great character does. Frankly, he's very arrogant, pretty much always believing that he knows the best path to victory. In that vein, he also winds up being very rash, not always thinking things through as much as he probably should. And along with tending to assume he knows best, he can get quite obsessive. If he has a goal, he will stop at almost nothing to obtain it. Case in point, him using the Eye of Sargeras to earthquake the whole world. And his obsession extends to his interpersonal relationships. While he does respect Tyrande's choice and doesn't interfere with her relationship with his brother Malfurion, it's been over 10,000 years and he still has this weird fixation with her. It's a little creepy and very unhealthy. And I'm gonna get very biased here, but it's also very stupid. Tyrande absolutely boils my blood and I cannot fathom how anyone would want to be in a relationship with her. There's definitely gonna be a video about her in the future. But what makes it even worse is that there is a much better option right there with my Ave. Now in real world terms, it'd probably be a horrible relationship. And the characters have never actually expressed any romantic interest in each other. But in fictional terms, it's so easy to ship them. Maeve is absolutely obsessed with Illidan. For starters, she served as his warden for 10,000 years. Then, once Taronda killed a bunch of her subordinates to free Illidan, she made it her personal goal to chase him down to the ends of Azeroth and beyond. She straight up lied to Malfurion about Tyrande being dead so that he would focus on helping her capture Illidan again. And when he escapes to Outland, she follows him there to continue the hunt. This continues into the Burning Crusade where it's discovered that she ironically had become Illidan's prisoner, and into the Black Temple Raid where she finally manages to get her vengeance. Of course, as Illidan says with his death rattle, the Huntress is nothing without the hunt, and Maev herself acknowledges this. In the novels, in the interim period between TBC and Legion, she goes kinda cuckoo, though by the time Legion rolls around, she's kinda got her head back on her shoulders. At any rate, despite her obsession with hunting down Illidan, she displays a lot of the same personality traits that he does. She believes that she knows best and gets hyper fixated on her goals not really showing concern for the consequences. And yeah, in Legion they do start begrudgingly working together for the greater good. This is most obviously seen in the aforementioned Cathedral of Eternal Night dungeon. Unfortunately, we didn't really see Maeve in the Argus patch. I believe her voice actress had to take a break because she had damaged her vocal cords. So we did wind up getting robbed of any potential farewell between her and Illidan. But it's just fun to imagine. Like, they have one of the best enemies to lovers set up. Give the people what they want, Blizzard. Also, just a fun fact, their voice actors also do Gara and Tsunade in Naruto. But yeah, all in all, I just want to say that Illidan is an amazingly awesome character. I think Warcraft as a whole needs characters like him that are just fueled by rule of cool. Not every character, but we've definitely had a bit of a shortage lately. And I can absolutely see Illidan showing up again. Supposedly, Last Titan is going to involve Eridicron finally luring the Titans to Azeroth, and it makes perfect sense that Illidan would be there for that. So I I'm begging you, Blizzard, please don't ruin him. Anyway, for the art, I, you know, obviously decided to draw Illidan. There's really not much more for me to say on him. He's surprisingly complex for a guy that doesn't wear a shirt. And I set him on top of Black Temple because that's just one of the most iconic Illidan spots. And that's really all I have to say. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next week. Bye bye